Hey, good morning, everybody. I see you guys are already using the chat box, so thank you so much um, for doing that. Um, I apologize again for any confusion. Um, you know, we just had one uh, kind of snafu with um, Zoom, comp or I'm sorry, WebEx, and so, um, but it looks like we've got it all together. So I'm so excited to really start today, really engaging our, our parents and our students and really hearing from you all um, and, um, you know, talking about how best we can better support you, what are some do's and don'ts, what are some pros and cons, and, and really kind of dig deep here. So we want to um, let this be a sharing community. So for those of you all who do have students and parents with you in the office, if you'll allow them to use the chat box, that's what we're going to do so that we can make sure everybody can see all of the questions. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Marissa Leitze. I am the program manager here for the New Skills for Youth grant. Um, and so um, before I start, I do want to let you know, we do have a special guest today here at the end. Her name is Kaylee Field. She is with Next Thoughts and they are the um, vendor in charge of um, designing one of our really exciting online tools that um, we're going to use to make sure that all of our teachers, parents and students and family members are all connected. So really excited um, to really um, dig into this and, and get started. So um, for those of you who are new on the call, um, the New Skills for Youth grant was awarded to the State Department of Education um, January 11th in 2017. And so what we have done is um, we wanted to um, cast a vision for Oklahoma um, students. And really what that looked like um, was broken down into about seven objectives. Um, I won't read every objective, but um, today one of the most important are objective four, and that is to talk about career advising, career readiness, and of course, ICAP. And that's what we're going to get into today. So the vision for the new skills for youth is to ensure all students have the opportunity and support to success successfully secure a post-secondary degree or industry certification that reflects each individual's passions and skills. So something that's um, different about this initiative is it's very student driven. We want to make sure that it reflects each student's individual passion. Now, one question we do get a lot is, does that mean that I'm going to have to visit with every single student one on one? Absolutely not. And we're going to talk about um, different ways that students can be involved um, and get information, um, but without having to do the, the one on one meetings and those things as well. So again, here are those seven objectives real quickly. And what you see there highlighted is objective four. And that is what we are going to talk about today. So before we get into it, I did want to show you all this graphic here. And this is really kind of paints the picture of why we are doing this. Um, in 2016, Oklahoma's adults 25 years old or older um, this is um, about 46% of that age range had a high school diploma or less. Only 30% had an associate's, 16% had a bachelor's, and 8% a graduate degree. In 2025, the, new, the projection for the new jobs, the requirements are going to be 24% of jobs will only be attainable with people with a high school diploma or less. 45% um, of the jobs are going to require an associate's certificate or credential, 26% a bachelor's, and 6% a graduate degree. Um, and so this is really kind of the why we are facing a very large skills gap and we need students to be prepared um, for opportunities beyond um, uh, opportunities in Oklahoma, but also be prepared to have to seek education beyond high school. And so that's really what this ICAP is really all about. So a definition of college and career readiness, um, and you'll see this quite often. Um, but college and career ready means that school students graduate from high school prepared to enter and succeed in post-secondary opportunities, whether college or career. So here, um, if you have any questions about what um, ICAP really is, what is the definition, um, especially of speaking to our, our parents and students. Um, so, parent, so ICAP, the biggest thing to remember is that it is an individual career and academic plan. So it is very much focused on the student's needs. They are in the driver's seat. Um, in that plan, you're going to explore career, academic, and post-secondary opportunities. So when we say post-secondary, um, high school students are in secondary school. So any education beyond high school is called post-secondary. So when we say post-secondary opportunities, we're meaning career tech, on the job training, going off to college, military, those things as well. 
So the next big line here is ICAP has to begin with the family and the student. So again, you all are a partnership. Um, you may be having conversations now with your um, families or um, you know, parents with your students or vice versa about um, ways to prepare for a career. What's next? You know, what are, what are your interests? And that's an important way to start. What are your interests? And let's start from there. Let's back up from there. So when we talk about your interests, what are some careers that connect to those interests? And then when we decide upon some careers that we're interested in, what are the ways that we can prepare for those careers? What degrees are required? What um, career tech certifications are required in those things as well? Um, and then lastly, creating their own meaningful pathway to a career and to be career and college ready, I'm sorry. And, um, and that looks different for everybody. Um, you may be interested in being a nurse and that may be something that is very, very interesting to you, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go right to four year college. You may need to start at a two year college and then transfer to a four year. And maybe that's because you wanna work while you're in school or maybe going to a four year might be a little intimidating at first, or maybe you just need a little time to kind of figure that out and that's okay. Um, but then also there are ways to use your career technology centers as well. And so those are lots of opportunities and various career pathways or pathways to a career. Um, and, and we know that those are going to yield lots of conversations. And so really um, what we're doing with this ICAP is we want to make sure that you have plenty of time to explore and have those conversations so that you can put a plan together um, after um, high school. So the purpose of this, of course, um, and, and I just mentioned that was really, I'm gonna focus on that last line, to create their individual career pathway to success. Now, um, one thing that we, we wanna make sure is understood is that um, this, is some, this plan is going to be changing, it's gonna evolve. And we know that your ICAPs are going to change from year to year or even from month to month. And that's okay, that's exactly what we want to happen. Um, for the most part, even students who go on to college or career tech, they change their focus more than once on, on various occasions because you're still learning and still getting exposed to different opportunities. And so that doesn't mean that th that's a failure or, or I have no idea what I'm going to do we want you to explore and to change those things and as you learn more um, you're exposed to more and you'll make other choices and that's what we want to happen here so here are a couple of benefits for the students um, for, for having an ICAP so one is engagement motivation um, self-efficacy in their academic work so meaning that you're uh, motivated to uh, move forward and, and you're able to take charge and um, you know not waiting until someone gives you direction you're kind of striking out on your own um, you're more likely to take the challenging coursework or the coursework that really prepares you for that career sometimes it's not that we're not interested in you know these particular math or science courses or even you know in the upper level English it's just that question of what do I need this for um, once you find out what careers you are interested in, then you're able to learn what courses are required for that. And sometimes that helps you kind of paint a better picture for what your um, career course will look like. Um, owning your interests, skills, and abilities. So um, those are things that are unique to you. You know, no teacher could tell, tell a student or, you know, no parent could tell a student either. But, you know, parents, you know, this gives you an opportunity to make a, uh, to create a space where a student can explore freely and ask several questions. Uh, we'll talk about some different resources that can kind of help you um, nudge them in that direction as well. Um, and then finally, some goal setting and planning skills. Um, you may have a goal, you may have something, but it may not be completely fleshed out. Maybe you don't have all the details. Um, this is really, this ICAP process is really gonna help you nail down your goal, but also start to put together some different pathways and really create that A through E plan. Maybe I have an A plan, plan A, plan B, and all the way through plan F. That's what I had, I had several plans. Um, and then when one doesn't work, that's okay, we'll, we'll go a different route. But we wanna make sure that you have all the resources available to be able to do so. Um, benefits to educators, and, and this is something that we talked about in several of our other meetings, but of course communication with students. If students, if you um, are able to start talking about your career plans and, and really communicate to your teachers what you need, what questions do you have, or um, what scholarships opportunities um, you're interested in. That helps the teachers help you better. That helps your counselors and, and your principals and, and anyone, um, mentors, help you better. The more specific you can be about um, needs that you have, the better people are able to help you. 
um, reduce disciplinary problems, um, increase parental involvement. Again, you know, taking advantage of those adults that are in your lives, especially for those parents to be able to connect with students um, and connect with their children and, and those things as well. Again, it's more seamless. Uh, streamlined conversations very specific to you know which careers I'm interested in and what programs and those things as well and of course that makes it a lot easier for us all to help each other when, when we have more specifics. Um, improved academic engagement with students. What that means is uh, more students again once they have the question answered of the why, why do I need this, why am I doing this, I'm more likely to take advantage of opportunities in front of me. And, and so that's what we've been able to see as well. And of course, increased graduation rates. Um, these are some benefits to, um, again, those post-secondary educators. So these are educators from career tech or higher education or college or your two year or four year. Um, they see that students are more prepared. Of course, if you have taken the necessary coursework and you have an idea of what you wanna do, you are more prepared. Um, less likely to need remediation. So remediation are um, courses um, and oftentimes in math or English, if you have not um, given a, or um, received a high enough score on perhaps maybe your ACT or SAT score, sometimes you have to take a class to prepare you um, for the first um, levels of math and reading. The unfortunate thing about those courses is those are just preparatory courses and you do not receive college credit for that. So oftentimes it's kind of a, a time that you've had to spend here and money you've had to spend there that doesn't actually go towards your transcript. And that's a Summer. So um, we want to make sure that we reduce the amount of students um, having to um, take those remediation courses. We want students to arrive on a college campus prepared to go into the necessary math or reading courses required to go on to their degrees. We don't want any students to spend any time in any remediation courses. And so we found that students who participate in the ICAP process are more prepared for those courses and do not need those, those remediation classes. You have a better understanding of engagement and pre-college activities. So pre-college activities, of course, could be scholarship um, searches, um, going on um, tours, or perhaps maybe it's going and touring your career tech center and, and learning the best way to enroll in those career training programs. You just have a better understanding of what's available to you. Um, and then, of course, more likely to have gained college credit while in um, high school or secondary studies. So I wanted to show you um, first our first year, our pilot study districts. Um, this is from our first year, um, which would have been um, last year in 2017 when we started. And so you'll see um, about 28 districts there that are reflected. And I'll pause and let you all take a look at those. And, and while you're taking a look at that, I didn't want to um, further explain really um, the process of what we are doing now. Um, you all have committed to um, volunteering on your pilot study teams. And in case um, you um, have not heard um, really about what we are doing here, the Individual Career in Academic Planning or the ICAP will be a graduation requirement for incoming ninth graders next year. So anyone who is in the ninth grade next year will be required to start the ICAP process. And we'll get into the, the specifics of that ICAP here later. So in preparation for that date, we have been working with several school districts like yourselves to put together some small teams um, at each school site. So those teams will have a counselor, a teacher, a principal, a maybe a superintendent of some sort, a parent, and a student. And so what we are asking for your teams is to uh, give us some feedback on the best way to put together an ICAP process in the school. So what we want to hear from you is what would be helpful to you to prepare for college or career tech or for a job or, you know, anything after high school. Uh, what are we missing? What are some things you'd like to see more of? What are some things that are available that, that really don't speak to you? Um, what are some things that we could do better and that other people could learn from school districts? We want to hear about your experiences um, and we want your suggestions. And so that's what we're really doing here today is to prepare you um, really for this process that's going to take place next year, but also really kind of glean from you and, and from your experiences. 
So here are more districts that are participating. We have a total of 74 school districts and 173 school sites or school buildings that are participating in this pilot. And our pilot will be ending um, at the end of this school year. So um, in May, that will be the, the conclusion of our second pilot year. Um, and so we will have lots of feedback and materials to put together for schools. And, and some of that feedback will include um, suggestions from you all. So um, I just spoke about the ICAP group, but I did want to give you guys a chance to take a look. So um, the requirements for the team that you are a part of is um, school sites had to choose at least one grade to uh, participate in the pilot, and that was a grade 6 through 12. Many school districts chose more than one grade. They had to identify a contact person for the study. Um, they put together a school advisory team, and that is a team that you all are a part of. Um, they chose an online tool, so um, many of you, and we want to hear from you all, um, your experience with the online tool, so we'll get into that in a moment. Um, each school had to provide a parent night in the fall and in the spring. Um, they had to um, commit to attending monthly advisory group meetings, which is the meeting that we're doing right now. We had a lot of webinar meetings. Um, they um, participated in a survey, so some of you all have been surveyed, and um, we had a kickoff training at the beginning of the year, and so that was um, for a lot of your teams, and those were your teachers, your counselors, and your principals that attended a, a kickoff training so that they could put together an ICAP process for you all to participate in this year. So I apologize if this is very small jumbled together, but I did want you all to see the full breadth of the team here. So um, these are kind of some roles and responsibilities as team members. So as a student, you know, committing to participate in the ICAP process and develop your ICAP plan, and that's what we want to get some feedback from you about. Um, of course, here, I won't read your responsibilities. That's a, a ton there, but I'll let you all take a look on your own. For parents and families, we wanted you to collaborate with your teachers and your counselors and allow your student to explore, prepare, and really plan for their um, options after high school. Um, principals, of course, are helping um, implement um, the ICAP in the building. Counselors, well, working with the principal, both of them kind of co-leading that. The, the teacher, of course, implementation, um, providing us some feedback. They're also maybe, um, they may have provided you all with some activities in class. I've heard from a couple of schools that have had some teachers have some curriculum in class. So lots of opportunities for you guys to explore. Um, your special education teacher as well, doing the same thing as a classroom teacher. And then you may have a career tech teacher or counselor and a business and community leader as well. And so as you can see that it takes a lot more than just a school counselor to talk to and put something together for an ICAP. Um, career advising is one piece of the ICAP. Those are, you know, when we say career advising, we're meaning maybe conversations that you may have with an adult to really prepare you for a career, answer any questions. But career advising is not just for your counselor. Sometimes, you know, as a student or a parent, you may have asked your teacher uh, or your student's teacher or, your, um, or you may have asked a coach or your principal. It's really anyone in that building that can really answer some questions because they've all been through there. Everybody that's in your building has been through some level of education beyond high school or they wouldn't be working there. So, um, so they could answer questions or they could find someone who can help you. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to create some mentors throughout the building. And so a lot of our ICAP pilots, all of them have done a great job of really scaling um, career advising and, and really this ICAP process throughout the entire building and not just leaving it right there in the school counselor's office because that's just not where it belongs. It has to be throughout the entire school to be successful. And so we look forward to hearing um, about about your experience with that. So um, real quickly, these are a couple of the online tools um, that you may find familiar. Um, at the top, OK Career Guide, that is one of the free online tools that Oklahoma offers. And that is a tool that uh, most school districts are going to be using to keep track or monitor your ICAP. And so we want to hear about your um, experience with that in a moment. The same with OK College Start, another free tool that a lot of our school districts are using as well. So both of those tools, um, one of those should probably be familiar to you all. And, and so we want to ask you about your experience on that. The last one, our online community platform, we actually have a guest here is going to be providing you all with a short training um, for using
using the tool and really kind of giving you a behind the scenes look into it. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to our, um, I'm, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to ask you all a couple of questions here. And so again, you can go ahead and use that chat box. Now, many of you all received the questions ahead of time. So um, I'm going to pause here and just really ask, I want to hear from, um, let's say, um, our parents who are on the call. Could you, um, and feel free, anyone, um, could you please share with us um, really ways that, at which this process of ICAP has really helped you. Um, you know, feel free to share with us if, if it's, if you just attended one overview session at your school or if just having conversations with your student, let us know how has this process at your school really helped you start having more of these conversations with your um, students. Great. Um, so I have from um, Shelly Plum that um, this process has opened up conversations between me and my sons about their future plans. That is perfect. And, uh, and I didn't think, um, I know that some of you guys are with your teachers. So if you could list um, your school and the grade of your child um, in your um, answer, that will help us too. I'm sorry, I should have, I should have said that. Um, and Ms. Welch um, has helped me become more aware of my daughters and their career choices. So that's perfect. And, and of course, that's wonderful. You know, you, you learn so much about your own children when they start to share their interests because there are things that we know and then there are other things that we just, we just don't know. Um, let's see here. The mentorship program that my 10th grader is involved in has really opened a lot of conversation between me and my daughter about her future plans. She is a 10th grader at Tahlequah. That's perfect. Perfect. A mentorship program is a perfect way to really start delving into those conversations as well. Thank you guys so much for that. This is perfect. Perfect. Keep going. So other ways that um, as parents, and this is to the parents, that um, this has helped you all um, really, um, you know, start these conversations or, or and it, it could just be the conversation piece and we'll get into the activities later. So um, let's see, Shawnee middle school, eighth grader. Um, this has allowed us to be more informed. Our daughter's really being reflective of interest and how it will help drive career choices. Perfect, perfect. Um, at Hefner Middle School, um, the seventh grader, um, we have talked about what he wants to do after high school and if the interest inventory he did matched his interest. And those are always the best ones. I will encourage you as parents to take the interest inventories. Um, you know, those are always fun to take yourselves and just see how close it is to your interests. And then don't be afraid to have conversations with your students. Sometimes it opens it up. Um, you know, this is so far off from what I thought I was going to do at your age. And, and, you know, for me, I, I thought I was going to be, a, well, maybe I'm not that far off. I thought I was going to be a TV personality person, you know, of some sort. And, I, oh, well, I still get to talk on a microphone, so that's fine. So it's cl that's close enough, but so not in that ballpark. And, um, and so it's very funny to take those interest inventories and, and just kind of reflect on all the things I thought I knew when I was in eighth grade. So I encourage you guys to do that. That could be a really fun activity to do as well. Um, let's see. So the interest inventory strengths questionnaires help narrow down career choices. Perfect. 10th grader at Bartlesville. That is so huge. Yes, because the world of work can seem so large for students. And when you can do something that can narrow those choices down, man, that really makes a difference. Great. Thank you for sharing that. So um, 10th grader, um, another 10th grader um, did a report on career choice. And we are seeing as the year goes on that she is maybe thinking that her interests are changing. Good conversation to think about for the future and her interests. Absolutely. This is exactly what we want to happen. We want those interests to change and, um, and we, want, um, we want them to change several times. And, and if it does, it's working. That's exactly what we want. Um, there are several times, you know, I worked and um, at Oklahoma Baptist University, I was a director of career development, and I can't tell you how many times I've had students that had come into my office who'd wanted to be a doctor since they were in first grade, but they never did any interest inventories or anything. And that first semester of, you know, our intense science courses and <laughs> was just not for them, and they completely changed course. And, um, and, and how helpful it would have been 
and had they taken these assessments and had conversations like your children are having with you and and I can't help but wonder how many times their interest probably would have changed and it would have been free to change your interests. Right now it is free to change your interests and change direction. After high school, not so much. It's not very free. So so we want that to happen right now. This is perfect. Thank you so much. So um, now I'm going to switch focus to the students. Um, how has this process helped you kind of think about um, choices or prepare um, for choices or careers after high school? Tell me, um, you know, again, your name and um, where you, um, your, high, your um, school and your grade, and that will help. I'll pause again for any students who are on the call. Um, and if any, okay, it looks like I have a me. I'm sorry, I have a lag in my chat box here. So my name is Gabby Wheeler and I'm 12th grade at Tahlequah um, and participating in the internship program and been able to get some real world experience while being able to network with those in the community. That's wonderful, absolutely. That's so huge to be able to get out there and get that confidence and, and working with adults. So great job, Gabby. Um, Lily, in, who's a sixth grader in Okmulgee, um, showed a lot of options for careers. That's wonderful. It's so exciting to start making those connections between school and your career options. Absolutely. Great job, Lily. So Nancy, a teacher at Fort Grob, Crob, I'm sorry, Cobb Broxton, um, and is in the seventh grade career class. That's awesome. Great. I'm going to try to make this a little. So Kaylee, an eighth grader at Bristow. Um, has helped me by introducing me to jobs that I never thought of. So great. That is so true. That is the perfect, perfect piece. That's what we want. Um, Isaac Whitley, ninth grader at Fort Supply. Um, ICAP has shown me all the different opportunities that there are in the workforce. That's wonderful. That's exactly what we want. We want you all to get exposed to things early. Um, Elise, um, ninth grader at Shawnee, um, helping to plan to become a lawyer. Perfect. Awesome. That is great. That's actually one of the careers that we're focused on. So we'll be happy to help answer questions. So um, Ryan Clements, a seventh grader, has brought up things as careers that I haven't really thought about doing. And that's exactly what this is about. You guys are doing an excellent job by that. Great job. Um, and then sixth grader Zoe, this program has helped me see new opportunities for my future. And that's exactly what we want to see happen. Thank you all. Jordan, a 10th grader from Bartlesville, um, has really helped me start to narrow down career fields and explore my careers. Excellent. Um, Hayden from Morris, let's see. Um, 11th grade has helped me study for the ACT. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. That college preparation test is extremely important. I'm Jason Gord, and I'm also a 12th grader. Okay, let's see if I can, there we go. Um, 12th grader at Tahlequah. I started a school year thinking I wanted to do culinary, and through the internship program, I've gained experience, and now through my second internship, I'm learning more towards automotive. Wow, and very, very different, but very cool. I'm, I'm so glad that you've made that connection. This is knowledge I would not thought about myself if I didn't go through the internship program. That's excellent, thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Jason. Um, Kushi Patel, um, 10th grader at Dove. Um, this has helped me narrow down my career choices based on my interests. It keeps us from wasting money and time from something we did not want to do. Very, very important, huge. Um, Peyton Jones from Collinsville, sixth grader, showed a lot of career options. Kagan Dugan, oh, and I'm so sorry, I'm probably butchering these dudgeon. I am in the seventh grade careers class at Fort Cobb Broxton Public Schools. ICAPS has helped me 
learn all about the different careers that I might like or might not like, such as animal control worker, vet, or vet veterinary assistant, rancher, et cetera. Great. So you've got some great options there. So Ann Lee, eighth grader from Ada, I'm interested in becoming a marine biologist, but I'm exploring other avenues through career fairs that we attend. Great. And that's exactly what it's about. You guys did an excellent job. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so my next question for students, again, um, I want to know um, how do, um, some of you have shared some internships and have done some career um, exploration, and, and I'm assuming some of you have been using that online tool as well. But let's shift more to conversations. Who um, at your school are you having conversations with about this, about career planning? And I'll give you guys some time. It looks like my system here kind of lags a little bit, so it'll... Oh, I'll repeat the question. So who in your school or your family will say uh, adult, let's say what adult um, helps you um, in thinking through these conversations? And while you're thinking, I'm going to read from Kara Henton. Um, she's in seventh grade um, at Fort Cobb, Broxton. She said, ICAP has helped me learn more about the career I want, multimedia animator art slash artist, and how to get the degree of training for this. Perfect. So Ryan from Hefner Middle School says both of his parents have been available to really have those conversations. That's perfect. Um, Lily, sixth grader in Okmulgee, my counselor, Miss Humphrey. Perfect. Absolutely. Um, we have more conversations with our parents and our internship teachers. Perfect. Absolutely. Um, let's see. I have talked really to my mom, um, Kelly Hamlin. So um, Kelly, mom Kelly, um, has been helping her um, child really about those career options. So this is great. Lots of conversations with parents and things. So Isaac Whitley, ninth grader at Fort Supply. I talk to my dad a lot about what I want to do in the future. But in school, I usually talk to my computer teacher or my counselor. Perfect. Absolutely. So I'll pause there. But what I love about this is that um, while, yes, you know, lots of conversations are happening with parents and counselors and teachers, but it's really everybody. You know, it's not just one person that's really helping you all make these discoveries. And so I love that. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, Josie and Peyton Bristow High School um, talked to both of their parents. Um, Let's see, Rebecca Welch, my entire family is involved in my education and career planning. And so that's Elise, Elise. Um, Josh from Bristow, I would talk to my mom, which is also a teacher. Perfect. Um, Kushi Patel, 10th grader from Dove, um, talk to my internship teachers and my parents. And let's see, Ann Lee, um, I talk to my parents and grandparents and get information from my school teachers and counselors. Perfect. So you all are really benefiting from this process. It's really putting together a, a um, strategy team um, that is really working with you all through this. And this is perfect. You know, this is absolutely um, exactly what we want to see in the ICAP process. Absolutely. So now I'm, oh, I have one more and then I'll, I'll switch over. So Reagan Hatcher from Fort Cop Rocks and I talked to my mom about becoming a forensic scientist. Now I can tell my my mom how I could become a scientist, all the different types of um, forensic scientists and what colleges there are for my degree. So perfect. Having those conversations. Absolutely. That's what we want to see. So I'm going to switch focus now to parents. So uh, how has this process um, really helped you become more, um, if it has, um, helped become more knowledgeable about um, ways to help your students? Has it helped you in that process? And um, if you can tell me what are ways that you've become more informed, whether it be from conversations with your students, from teachers, maybe going to some of the parent nights, um, or using online tools, whichever. So how, how have you become more informed in this process?
Great. So Peggy Cavill um, says that the meetings that she has attended at her school have been very helpful. Um, Gretchen Slate says, our school hosted a great parent night just last week. We talked in depth about ICAP and it was so informative. That's perfect. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Other suggestions or uh, other answers? I'm going to ask questions. This is for the parent and the student. Um, can you just let me know, maybe in a, a you know a short sentence, what are some ways that we can better prepare you for life after high school? So, are there specific activities, um, you know, specific information that you need? Think of some ways. You know, again, you know, keep in mind we are. This is a focus group, and this is something that's going to be helping us really prepare the perfect program for um, schools and teachers and um, you know, students and families next year. So be thinking about that. What are some ways we can really um, you know, help um, with this process? And I'm, I'm gonna read this one. Um, Sherry from Bristow, mother of five, I attended a student-led conference and was shown my son's digital ICAP portfolio. Very helpful. Perfect, thank you for sharing that. So again, that question really is, and, and this will be our last question. So this is to the student and the parent. What are some ways um, at which your schools can help prepare you for life after high school? Um, and, and you know, don't you know, don't be shy. You know, we want to hear everything because again, this is what we're wanting to learn from you. Uh, we want some of the um, focus group questions really to kind of gear that way. So one is scholarship opportunities for those that do not qualify for Oklahoma's promise. Absolutely, perfect. Thank you for sharing that, Gretchen. I know there are many other burning suggestions. So I'll give you guys just one more minute before we'll switch to our training. But what are some ways that um, your schools can better prepare you for life after high school? So offering more exploratory classes so students can see what possible careers are out there and possibly what they are interested in. Show kids that do not wish to attend college that there are other places to study or prepare for careers besides college. Perfect. Um, statistics on what jobs are in high demand or new and upcoming jobs. Perfect. Maybe have more speakers come to school and share with us about their occupations. Excellent. Um, Kinley from Bristow, teaching more finances and seeking out scholarship information. Absolutely. So these are some excellent suggestions. Um, you can feel free to keep adding those, but I do want to give you all some time to um, receive a training today from our speaker. So I'm going to transition to that. Thank you all so much for sharing um, your information. Um, that is perfect. And that is really going to be key and, um, you know, really helping, um, you know, frame this. Um, okay. Oh, I do have last two ones and I will read these. Okay, so Gabby from Tahlequah, I wish I had, would have had more time to look at my options as far as colleges before my senior year. Everything seems rushed trying to figure it all out and while doing all the things, including for senior year, absolutely. And that is exactly why we are putting this ICAP together. Thank you, Gabby. Scholarships, volunteering opportunities help with transitioning from high school to college. Perfect, thank you, Cushy. And internship opportunities that can help you decide if that is what you are interested in before college. Thank you so much. So now I'm going to transition to Kaylee Field. Um, she is going to provide you all sort of just a brief overview of our new online tool that is really aimed at connecting parents to businesses 
um, and teachers as well. So you guys can start putting together some of these awesome internship programs. And so that's really in one piece. And then we have another piece for students to really explore these opportunities. And so she's going to show you really two ways that um, you guys can really get involved in this. So I'm going to pass it to Kaylee. Mm -hmm. You may know how to do this, but I'm going to get hers away. Thank you. Okay, we'll just shut it. Do you have any more you're presenting? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to make yours go away then. And tell me what else we need to show. That's perfect. You're okay? Yep, that's okay. great. Well, as I said, my name's Kaylee Field. I work at NextThought, which is the company that powers the technology behind the platform. I'm so excited to present to you. But before I get started, I just want to say, wow, like this is, um, it was so inspiring to hear your stories, um, hear how this has changed uh, your pathway towards the future. And I remember being a high schooler and I really resonated with a lot of the things that you all um, mentioned about exploring careers and the opportunities that are there. So wonderful, wonderful. It's um, it's a really powerful and exciting program that you're a part of and I'm inspired by how proactive you all are with pursuing your career academic and post-secondary opportunities. So getting started, um, I want to show you the platform available to you by OSC, the resources and tools um, to help you in your ICAP plan. The very first thing we'll take a look at is just creating an account and logging in, accepting an invitation to one of the exciting modules that explores career opportunities. Then we'll take a look at the homepage, some different features that we have as well on um, within the module and then take a tour of the module itself. So one of the ways you might be introduced to the platform is through an email that looks really similar to this. Um, by one of your ICAP team members. It says you're invited to and you'll have um, several different career modules here. This one's the human body down to a science. This is just one way. We'll show you another way here in a moment too. Very easy. I'm going to click accept invitation. This is going to take me to the osde.nextthought.com platform. This is the URL that was mentioned within the previous slide. The very first thing I need to do is create an account because I don't have an account yet. Something important to know is that if you received a invitation to your email, you need to use the exact same email in which you were invited within the email field here. That's very important because the code that you receive is individualized to you. Create a username and then also your password. And what you'll see if you go in um, from your survey, the very first thing we need to do is describe ourselves. So I'll be a student in this case. We'll pick a school here. And then you'll be directed immediately into the catalog to redeem the module and join the module in which you're invited. Now we can get back to this screen at any point if you're just given a code. And I'll show you that here in a moment. Let's click the redeem button. Now we've successfully joined this module. I can go straight from here and click open. But before I do, let me take you back through how to get to the catalog. Here's your home page. So if you create an account and you simply need to use a code to join one of the career pathways, you're going to click the add button here. Click the redeem tab and then you can just type it in. So those are two different ways. Now let's take a look at your home page. So this is the page that will contain all the careers that you're exploring as well as a community. Before we jump into the community of the module, let's look at some real quick setup tools. 
Over here, I have my image. I can view my profile. I can manage any account settings. So if I need to change my password at any time, I can do so. There's also a contact us button. So at any time, if you have questions about the program or about the technology, you can click here. You can also send us an email at support at nextthought, N-E-X-T-T-H-O-U-G-H-T dot com. If you want to, you can fill out your profile. You just click the edit button here and you can write a little bit about yourself. This is also where if you need to change your email, you can do so. I'm gonna click X to return to the home page. And now the very first thing, let's look at the community here. So think of this as a big, huge area that you can meet with other people and you can share ideas, ask questions to help you within your ICAP. So clicking into it, you can see a lot of conversations that have been started. Over here to the left are some different forums. So educational opportunities, discussions in general, career pathway toolbox, as well as scholarship opportunities. So if you know of any of these that you'd like to comment within or scholarship opportunities, just simply click here. You can start a conversation. You can even add a whiteboard, a video, or even an attachment if, for example, a scholarship opportunity is in PDF form. Another thing that we can do is comment on the ones that currently exist here. So just click on it, add a comment, and say anything I'd like to, and just click save to post. I'm gonna click the X to return to the homepage now. And now let's jump into the module that I redeem. So this one is the human body down to a science. Now this is just a small representation of what you'll see of all the other um, programs as well. So you'll see the same layout, the same opportunities here, the same inventory, the same survey, um, but it's focused on this specific career. So I show you this, but just know that this will represent all of, the, all of your interests together. So when we first jump into a module, notice that we are in the exploration tab. This tab is where you can find all the different resources and tools that OSDE has built out for you to guide you along this exploration. Over here to the left are different areas that we can walk through that contain information and different activities. And then over here to the right are a lot of different opportunities from videos and files and um, inventories, a lot of different resources for you. So let's start with the welcome to the online community platform. Here is the introduction video. There's a couple different things. I can play it straight within this window, or if I want to, I can follow a transcript. Let's take a look at the transcript view. People may think Oklahoma is home to farmers and ranchers. So notice as the video plays, we're actually seeing the transcript over here to the right and it follows along. So if you have any trouble with hearing or um, following along, then we can do so over on the right hand side. You can also use this to skip ahead. So if I click here within a video, I can move the time right to that timestamp. Another great thing I can do is I can add some comments in the context of my transcript. So if you think of, for example, YouTube or anything, if you're watching videos there, you can make comments at the very, very end, but then you have to put a comment about what part of the video you are interested in. This allows you to have that timestamp right within your note. I can write out a message for the entire module to see. I can also make it just private to only myself. So if I wanna type a note here, I can also share it with one of my friends or peers or mentors if I want to. If 
by adding their name above. Just like within our discussions, you can add a whiteboard and also a file attachment. Simply click Save to Post. When I want to exit the transcript, there's a little arrow up here. We'll go right back. And let's go to the next one. Once again, we have some videos for you, some information about getting started and a user guide here. So if at any point you have trouble navigating or knowing how to use the platform or even want to explore any of the social features, you can click the user guide here. Here's some short videos also to get you acquainted with the technology that you'll be using for your program. Next is exploration. This is a really exciting unit that explores the different industries within, specifically for us today, the human body down to a science. So here we have industry interviews and tours. Notice they hail from Oklahoma. We have some voices from the field, so you can explore some really specific areas within the module. And there's also the career interest inventory. So once we get to this, we can click here and we can begin taking the inventory. You can come back to this at any time. To go back, I'm gonna click the exploration tab and I'm back where I started. Now let's take a look at career fields. Also some other opportunities here. Here's a reading that we can do with any of our text within the platform. Feel free if you want to, to make a note. You can do a highlight. If you need to define anything, you can do so as well. And just like the transcript, I can also add a note and share it with anyone, share it with a specific person, or even, once again, just keep it private to myself. Here are some really great infographics for specific areas. So we'll take a look at that. And notice with PDFs, you can also download and print them as well. This will be important when we get into our college visits. Next, we have preparation with careers in the classroom. These are some areas that are coming soon. So Ask the Expert will be a virtual way to interview some experts within the field. Also, we'll have a directory of speakers from the previous years that will be up on the platform as well. Next is your action. Now that we've understood and explored different opportunities, let's take action. So this will guide you through the steps to do next. Here's some exploration of different opportunities from biotechnology, this one's diagnostic medical services, and here is your academic and career plan. So this will walk you through that ICAP process. So let's click how to create a plan. And once again, remember that you will see this on all the different career areas that you're looking at, not just this specific one. Learn more about preparing to enter your career field. We have visiting a college, which I'll show you this one specifically as well. This is something that you'll wanna make sure to print off if you visit a, a college to help with your, your ICAP points. So as you can see, once again, before I visit a college, I'm gonna go here and download or even print it immediately. And there's just some specific information that you can fill out on your visit and also have someone sign.
We also have some virtual campus tours, really neat. So some tours around the area. I'll let that load just a moment. Are you all seeing the screen? Looks like they're saying nothing is on the screen. A couple people. Okay. Okay. Yep. We got some yeses. Thank you all. Okay. So here's some virtual campus tours that we have. Really awesome. So let's go to the University of Oklahoma campus. You'll see some of these will open links to other websites. So if um, campus or a university is the pathway you're interested in pursuing, here's a way to get started before you're actually running out the door. We have some career plan links as well. Yeah, and this will take you to the two online tools. I believe that uh, Marissa had mentioned earlier was in one of the slides. So once again, some links to those tools. So this one is the college start. And then this one's the college, or I'm sorry, the career guide. Last of all, like we said, we want to always improve this program and make it um, more valuable as we go along. You guys play a big role in that with your feedback that you give us. So up shortly will be a survey that you can access from here. You'll simply click the start and then you'll be taken through a few private um, questions regarding your experience on the OK Edge platform, as well as the ICAP program. Any questions so far? And then I'll show parents some resources that you have as well. Marissa, they're asking, is this open to all parents or just the parents who are a part of the ICAP teams? So great question. Um, right now, it is open to all of our pilot teams because we do want to give you all an opportunity to test and get feedback from this before we roll it out statewide. But we will be rolling this out statewide pretty soon, um, actually sometime this month. Um, but we want to do, of course, give you all some time to play around in this and, and um, start the process of giving us feedback, taking those surveys before we move forward. Is everything in ICAP focused strictly on colleges and careers in Oklahoma? So no, um, this is not just focused on um, just careers and um, career training and, and those things in Oklahoma. If you look on your online tools, I believe it will have lots of resources for any students planning to go outside of the state. Um, it's a good question that you have talking about um, um, careers and those things as well. Um, we when we started to put this program together, we started to focus on the 100 critical occupations um, available in the state of Oklahoma so that everybody could see um, really kind of breaking down the world of work. Uh, we were afraid that if we started to scale this nationwide, that it would be too large for a student to really conceptualize how they would prepare for a career. And so we just focused on the state and what we knew. Um, we also did that because we wanted to make sure that students had the opportunity to connect with business leaders who were local, knowing, understanding that they wouldn't be able to intern with a, a company, you know, all the way in, you know, Wyoming or, or something like that. And so, uh, so to answer your question, the profile, the platform that you're seeing before, we have um, designed that in mind to prepare students for careers that are growing in Oklahoma. However, knowing that those careers are located all over the country, but it does kind of give them an opportunity to kind of test and see um, if that's the avenue they want to go. Great question. So Latoya, um, are the virtual campus tours just for colleges in Oklahoma? Right now, yes. Those were the only ones that we had access to. Um, again, you know, we've just started with the process, so we will um, add more as we go. This is an opportunity for us to add. So this is very much um, growing. Um, we're just starting off with the first year to um, kind of get everybody involved. And then, of course, we were able to add up updates and other activities and those things as well. So good question. Um, where do I get the codes to add different programs like human body sciences? My community doesn't let me see that. Perfect. 
um, those of you who are new uh, modules, we will be sending you all the codes um, very shortly for you to add yourselves. Um, we do um, ask, you know, for a, just a little patience as we kind of work through how we want to add the students. Um, and because we want to make it easier for you all and see if there's a way to add them by a batch instead of having the students have to add themselves one by one. So, um, so if you could just be patient with us on that one, we'll have an answer for you all very soon. But right now, if we can just have the teachers and the parents um, and, you know, the educators join the platform. We'd really welcome you all to get on and, and start to give us your feedback. So it looks like we have ran over a little bit on our time. So thank you all so much for being patient with us. And again, thank you so much for um, joining us with the Zoom conference. I apologize for all of um, any trouble. And I know that there are a couple of people that were still unable to see. And so I apologize. Um, Zoom, I believe, um, has some browsers that it works best with. And so for those that have had some issues with it kicking you off, we have recorded this and this will be available to you all after um, this meeting. So probably by the end of the day we will send this out as well um, thank you all again for joining us and again thank you students for giving us your feedback and parents as well for taking time out of your day um, we will um, use that feedback to really improve this program and thank you for for being a part of this process and um, so we encourage you guys to enjoy the rest of your day